Women Who Run With The Wolves, installment 21. We're focusing on chapter 8, self-preservation, identifying traps, cages and poison bait. The Feral Woman. It's Latin for wild beast. Once wild, then domesticated, and who has reverted back to a natural, untamed state again? Because her cycles and protective systems have been tampered with, she is at risk in what used to be her natural wild state. No longer wary and alert, she easily becomes prey. There is a specific pattern to the loss of instinct. There are various lures to which we are susceptible. Relationships, people and ventures that are tempting, but inside that good looking bait is something sharpened to a point, something that kills our spirit as soon as we bite into it. It's us we are usually extremely hungry for something soulful. We have to learn to veer away from traps, to be able to see the right turns. We have to be able to see the wrong ones. A woman's meaningful life can be pried, threatened, robbed or seduced away. Unless she holds onto or retrieves her basic joy and wild worth. Without a firm participation with a wild nature, a woman starves and falls into an obsession of feels better, leave me alone and love me, please. Even though she might, as in the tale, hit ground, ground zero minus five, bottom via famine, capture, injured instinct, destructive choices and all the rest. Remember, at the bottom, is where the living roots of Psyche are. In a sense, hitting bottom while extremely painful is also the sowing ground. Shoes protect and defend what we stand on, our feet. Feet represent mobility and freedom. Wild woman joy. The joy a woman feels when she has done something that she feels dogged about, that she feels intense about, something that took risk, something that made her stretch into her best self and succeed. Maybe gracefully, maybe not, but she did it and created the something, the someone, the art, the battle, the moment, her life. Wild woman emanates up through that kind of joy. That sort of soulful situation summons wild woman by name. The traps. Trap one. A carriage carries something from one place to another. A gilded cage. Is supposedly offering something more comfortable, less stressful, but in effect it captures instead. We have been seduced. The gilded carriage scenario overwhelms the simple joy of red shoes. The desire to have it easier is not the trap. That is something the ego naturally desires. Ah, but the price, the price is the trap. 
This is the beginning of soul famine for the creative spirit. Trap two, the dry old woman. She represents aspects of our psyche that are frozen and calcified. To follow, behave yourself, just keep a low profile, be nice, causes loss of soul in the extreme. The child becomes feral then, moving from a natural state to a captured one. Like all captured creatures, we fall into a sadness that leads to an obsessive yearning, often characterized as the restlessness with no name. Thereafter, we are at risk of seizing the first thing that promises to make us feel alive. The red shoes are burnt to ashes when we paint, act, write, do, be in any way that causes our lives to be diminished, weakening our vision, breaking our spirit bones. The starved soul. All she wants is her deep life back. All she wants are those handmade red shoes. Her life becomes ashes. When did my life become ashes? When did I lose my handmade red shoes? To be in the state of a starved soul is to be made relentlessly hungry. Then a woman burns with a hunger for anything that will make her feel alive again. A woman who is starved for her Real soul life may look cleaned up and combed on the outside, but on the inside she is filled with dozens of pleading hands and empty mouths. When the treasure of a woman's most soulful life has been burned to ashes, instead of being driven by anticipation, a woman is possessed by a terrible voraciousness. After famine, there is a fear one will again be captured someday. So one gets while the getting is good. When women do this, they are compensating for the loss of regular cycles of self-expression, soul expression, and soul saturation. The starving woman endures famine after famine. And it is, of course, such a relief and a pleasure to finally be able to enjoy sensation. Any sensation. That is the trouble with famine. If something looks like it will fill the yearning, a woman will seize it. No questions asked. The fourth trap is injury to our basic instinct. The consequence of capture. Instinct is Latin for instigation, to impel an innate prompting, an inner something that when blended with forethought and consciousness guides humans to integral behavior. She becomes sad which is the expected state when creative spirit is locked away. Lack of fleeing when it is absolutely warranted causes de depression. The soul is the feather on the breath of God. Look after it. The old woman's injunction to be proper kills off any opportunity to expand. Instinct injured, talented woman 
who in their vulnerable state made very poor choices. Trap five. A hunger for the soul life has rushed to the surface of the psyche, taking whatever it can lay its hands on, for it knows it will soon be repressed again. The shadow almost always contains very fine aspects of being that are forbidden or given little support by her culture. The visionary creator, the astute truth teller, the far seer, the one who can speak well of herself without denigration, who can face herself without cringing, who works to perfect her craft. This is the creation of the handmade life. When the maker stops for whatever reason, the energy that naturally flows to her is diverted underground. Where it surfaces wherever and whenever it can. When a woman pretends to press her life down into a nice tidy little package, all she accomplishes is spring loading all her vital energy down into the shadow. A woman can be outwardly polite and evil and cynical, but inwardly hemorrhaging. When a woman feels compelled to sneak life, she is in minimal subsistence mode. There is something in the wild soul that will not let us subsist forever on piecemeal intake. Because in actuality, it is impossible for the woman who strives for consciousness to sneak little sniffs of good air and then be content with no more. An oppressed woman not so much refuses to fit as she cannot fit without also dying. The spiritual integrity is at stake. Trap 7. Faking it. Trying to be good, normalizing the abnormal. Her attempts to accept this abnormal state further injure her wild instinct to react, point out, change, make impact on what is not right, what is not just. Trying to be good in the face of inner and outer peril, desouls a woman. It cuts her off from her ability to act. Normalizing the abnormal, which would normally lead to the correct situation, the soul, to instead sink into complacency and eventually, like an old woman, into blindness. Trap eight, dancing out of control. Obsession and addiction, alcohol, drugs, an abusive partner, all examples of this. They treat you well at first and then they beat you up. They apologize, give you a nice treatment for a while and then beat you up again. The trap in trying to hang in there for the good while trying to overlook the bad. This can never work. The woman just goes dead. She doesn't feel good or bad. She just doesn't feel at all. Remember your boundaries. I will take care of myself first. I will not allow others to guilt or manipulate me into doing things I'm not comfortable with. I will stand up for myself and voice my opinions with confidence. I will not hold myself responsible for the things beyond my control. I will communicate openly and when I need to, assertively. I will not let my happiness depend on other people.